Hello, welcome to Do It Yourself with Wayne. Today we're going to be installing these Decorators brand uh, aluminum pre-assembled porch railings. Uh, you may want to look for a previous video we did where we installed the uh, post covers. Uh, it's not very difficult, but there is a video about doing the post covers. But today we're going to be doing the porch railings. And as you can see, the one over there, we got one out of a box already. You can kind of see what it looks like out of the box. It is pre-assembled. Uh, but you do have installation hardware for mounting it. Um, you get in the box, you'll get four brackets like this. Uh, there's two goes at the bottom, two goes at the top for mounting the porch railing to the post. So you get four of those. You get a bag of uh, screws for installing them. Uh, you get two of these, which are just like the, uh, the balusters, but they go under the railings about midways to help support the railing so it doesn't sag in the middle over time, just to give it some extra support in the middle. And also it comes with instructions. Uh, you may want to read over the instructions before you start. Uh, one thing that was a little disappointing, but not too big of a surprise when we did the post covers, there were no instructions, but they were pretty simple to install anyway. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And uh, so now we're going to proceed with showing you how to install these pre-assembled aluminum porch railings. Now at this point we're ready to start our installation and we've already uh, went ahead and, and, and done some of this but we're going to show you what we did. Uh, first thing you want to do is measure between your posts and you want to measure the bottom and the top and ours is even we're about 65 inches on both but don't pay any attention to that because yours are going, will be different. And one thing I would strongly recommend that you do is measure all your sections. Now we've got four sections of these to install. Measure all your sections and whichever section is the widest, start with that one. And the reason I would recommend that is if by some chance you happen to cut that a little bit short, you can use that panel in one of the other places. Or if you start with the shortest section and you mistakenly cut it a little bit short, you just gotta go buy another panel because you can't put this stuff back together. Uh, so always start with your longest section and then work toward the shorter sections. And if you cut one a little bit wrong, you may still be able to use that panel. So uh, in this case, we've already cut this panel to 65 and a half inches, or actually our width is 65 and a half inches, but the, uh, the brackets that go on the end of the panels take up space as well. So the instructions will tell you that you cut it up one inch shorter than the width between your post to allow for the spacing for the brackets. So we cut our panel at 59 and a half inches. And before you cut that, um, think about where your balusters are going to end up. You want the spacing between your post and your first baluster to be pretty even on each end. You know, you don't want one end to be real close and the other end to be real wide because it just doesn't look right. Uh, it just looks better if they're even. So think about that. You may have to cut a little bit off both ends. Uh, in our case, we got lucky. We cut this off of one end and we're good with what's at the other end. This, our spacing will look good. But in your case, you may have to cut some off both ends. But um, when you get ready to cut these things, most any kind of saw that'll cut metal will work. Um, I use my circular saw. It has a carbide tip blade. Always wear your safety glasses. Um, if you've got a hacksaw with a metal cutting blade, uh, uh, a jigsaw of some sort, most anything like that will cut them. Uh, but just make sure you got some kind of a metal cutting blade or a carbide tip circular saw blade and you won't have any trouble cutting this stuff. And also, um, use your square when you're going to cut it. And just as a tip, if you're cutting with your circular saw, if you hold your square like that and put your circular saw against it, like that, you can cut straight across. This works for wood too. I do this all the time, cutting treaty wood for decks and things of that nature or whatever. But if you hold that square against your workpiece and put the, the base of your circular saw against that square, you're going to cut straight across. And you need something to make sure 
that you cut this railing straight across because the end pieces don't come in very far. If you cut crooked, it may not cover part of it. So make sure you do something to make sure you cut good and straight. Now you got two different end brackets for this uh, railing. Uh, you, you can see one's a little bit wider than the other. The narrow one goes on the top rail. The wider one goes on the bottom rail. Now right now we've got our, uh, our rail section upside down. So this is the bottom. And it goes on this way. And we found these are a little bit tight. So hammer. We'll help push it on there real good. It's just a snug fit, but it fits. And then we're going to take our screws. And you do have to have a square drive nut to do this. But just run your screws in there with, like I said, with your squ square drive bit. Uh, if you don't have to, if you don't have the square drive bit, uh, you may want to look for those at your local hardware store before you start this because you will have to have it. Okay, that finishes that one up. We've already done the top side, which like I said, this section is upside down. This is the bottom. We've already done the top. Now we're going to put it in place and make sure our spacing is right before we attach the ones on the other end, just in case we're a little bit long or something on our, on our uh, cutting. Now the next step is to install the little brackets that go under the railing to prevent sagging over the years. And basically, it's these pieces right here. The instructions say no more than 24 inches apart. Now, in our case, we got 60, basically 60 and a half inches. So if we go every 20 inches, we're within the specifications. But where this black mark is at is 20 inches. That one's 20 inches. And so we got 20 and 20 and 20, basically. But we decided ourselves that right here didn't look good. We wanted it here where it would be lined up straight under this baluster. We felt, we felt like that would look better. So that's where we're going to install them, one there and one here. And the way you install these things, you got these parts, you got the screw. Uh, instructions say drive a, a drill a 1 8 inch hole, so I got my 1 8 inch drill bit. Okay, now I've got the 1 8 inch hole, square drive again, nail, and then the screw goes in there, make sure it's squared up good, and we'll put this on here, and then the other one, the instructions tell you to take your other screw and screw it to your deck, and we decided that it ain't going anywhere. So we're going to take that foot and just put it there. And we're going to leave it like that. Uh, if over time we feel like it needs that screw into the deck, we'll put it on there. But for right now, we're going to leave it off. And I think that will be sufficient. So that's that step. Now at this point, we've got a railing in place. Uh, we've already put a couple of screws in the ends to mount it, but we're going to show you what we did. Uh, when I was using my drill, I wanted to drill in here but with my drill and the bit in the drill, I couldn't get a straight angle. So I used this drill bit extension so I could get my drill back and get a straighter angle. Uh, depending on the drill and the bits you've got, it may be a little bit different, but you need to drill a little bit of a hole. I'm going about that much, just getting through the, the post cover real good, but not really drilling very deep because the screw going into the wood can make its own hole. Now I've got uh, these finished screws that are white heads. Again, we're square drive. And you can use a square drive nut driver or whatever you got. Uh, I'm using the impact driver because I've got it. Well, you go straight. And 
and there we go. That's all there is to it. Now we're finished with the installation of our first panel. Uh, obviously in our case we've got several more panels to do. We've also got a couple of steps. There will be a railing that goes down the steps. Uh, when you purchase the railing panels, uh, the ones for the steps are a little bit different, but basically the installation is the same. Uh, on this decorator's brand railings, uh, I've been pleased with the installation process. Uh, all the components were in the box. The instructions were fairly easy to understand. I really don't have anything negative to say. I think it's worked out great. And I do recommend this brand if you have a railing like this that you need to put up. So at this point, I'd just like to say thank you for visiting Do It Yourself with Wayne. Please like and subscribe to our channel, and we hope you have a great day.